Goyel gengi ceriba, goyel gengi ceriba, goyel gengi ceriba, gino go anwe me. What you're hearing is a traditional indigenous song. It's been performed by five Gombangia dancers whose bodies are covered in white paint. The song's about a curlew bird. When the native bird sees danger, he pretends he's hurt. Danger and protection. That's two things Barrival understands more than most communities. We went through a horrific time, a lot of pissed off people at the time. There's not a word for hate, there wasn't a word for segregation, because those things didn't exist without people. We got the New South Wales Police, that's the many I've seen without a right. I'm here at the Barrival Memorial Cup. It's an annual sports carnival to remember the three kids who were murdered here in 1990-91. Colleen Walker-Craig, Evelyn Greenup and Clinton Speedy Juro. I've been coming to this regional community on New South Wales mid-north coast for 26 years. Over that time I've seen firsthand the racial divide that has cut this town in half. But today is a different story. <laughs> Look how they're enjoying themselves, all the, all the school kids, you know, this is, this is amazing, this is, goes on. Every year we have this, yeah. and they get their little free little bag gifts and everything, <laughs> from every little tent they go to, yeah. little photos taken. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was still young, to, I fit enough to get out there and play with them, <laughs> run with them. Come on, we can, we can find you some runners. We'll get you out there. <laughs> That's oh, Evelyn's mum, Rebecca. Ago, but... She's wearing a rainbow sun hat, tasseled vest and psychedelic flared pants, just as if she was living in the 70s. But behind this easy-going facade is a mum who's still in agony all these years later. You're always looking good? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> always good, looking good. <laughs> how, how does it uh, feel, 30 years or over oh, 30 years? 30 years, since, oh. uh, Evelyn was uh, taken from you. Oh, yes, yes, you're still feeling the pain, I think. But every year we have this special day and it makes you, you know, feel very happy and that because we've got a lot of school kids and that come to this um, day of those three girl, of kids. And sometimes you just want to break down and cry because they, it's just so beautiful that they all hear the kids. Mm. Yeah. I know, I know it's emotional uh, uh, whenever we, we talk about it, but it's been such a long, hard battle to try and get justice, and we, we, we still haven't got that justice. Yep, we still haven't. And it's, it's always p- very painful. And that, and, and you, you try not to think of it, but you, you gotta, it, it's always be there for the rest of your life. Yeah. Do, you, do you, you think what could have been if Evelyn was still alive? Oh, I think about it every day, what she would have looked like and that, and yeah. mm, every day. When I, I caught up with Billy of Evelyn's dad, and yeah. it, it digs him deep too. Yes, I know, he's, he's, he's in very a lot, lot of pain. Every time he just breaks down and cry. Yeah. And yeah, he comes down and we have a little talk and that, and we had... um. Uh, anniversary of his death, we all come down here and had a big barbecue and that. And I told him that, and you're coming down for this barbecue, I'm going to put on for Evelyn. And he just broke down and just cried. And we played Evelyn's special song that Billy always used to play for her, Daddy's Girl. So <laughs> me and Billy and Clarence got together and we just broke down and cried. Yeah. I, I, I think for people that haven't been what uh, you guys have been through, they don't understand how long and how hard this pain is. I've known you now for over 25 years. It feels like it's happened yesterday. You feel like it happens every day. You just can't get it out of your head. Mm. Uh, just laying in bed there and you just think and think and think about it all the time. Do you think you ever will get justice? Oh, that's a, that's a very hard thing to say, eh? We've been fighting for nearly 30 years, 33 years, and we don't know what's going to happen. I'm not saying this is justice, but uh, this, what's going on here today, shows that the kids haven't been forgotten. No, they they, they'll never be forgotten, the kids, because 
everyone still carries them in their heart, you know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can I give you a cuddle? <laughs> you know, maybe cry. <laughs> look. Oh, look, T. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Days like today are filled with emotion. As hundreds of school kids from around the region start competing in touch football and netball, I make my way over to Evelyn's dad, Billy, who I saw yesterday on the drive with Lulu. Billy, good to see you, brother. And always good to see you. Uh, you make my day. It helps me, Gary. It is, but it helps. I'm not seeing you here. It's hard, isn't it? What's, how do you feel seeing all these people uh, celebrating but in memory of uh, Evelyn and uh, Colin and Clinton? Yeah. I mean, it means a lot, you know. It means a lot to me, and I suppose everybody who gets involved in it, it means a lot too, you know. Yeah. It's just not about Barrowville community. It's about the valley. Yeah. And it, it, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, and what I'm seeing here, well, you got you got police here, and yeah, you know, the Barrowville community mixing with police. Well, that didn't happen in the old days. Uh, it never did. Yeah. And then uh, you, you got you got the other kids, not just Aboriginal kids, but all mixing in together. Well, that's what it's all about, you know. It's just not about Indigenous people. It's about non-Indigenous people too. Coming together. Coming together, or trying to come together in any way that they can or try to but yeah no that's the way it is you know but it's a good thing it is a good thing yeah billy your, your daughter taken from you at such a young age how's that impacted on your whole life yeah you hard spot Sorry, mate. I know talking about it just brings up the brings up the pain. Well, when that happened, Gary, I thought that was the end of me. I didn't care about life anymore. You know, just rip reached in, ripped my heart out and squashed. Yeah. That's how it, I mean, I, I, I had four years with it, you know. When she came into the world, Gary, you know, there was nothing more. I mean, I had children before she came along, She's but she was my princess. first daughter, yes, you know. Yeah. I had three sons straight up. Yeah. I was happy too, you know. But when the daughter came along, that was my will there too. Yeah. But then that all fell apart. And that just, that's where I went from being happy go lucky. You know? I very, it changed me in a, in a big way. You wouldn't have known me years ago, but when that all happened, I just folded. I just said, nah. If everything, I'm going my way, the way I want to go. If that didn't happen, I'd be a different person altogether. You wouldn't know me. Changed so many people's Very lives. Very much, yeah, it? it did. You know, it, uh, in that way, I, I said, I don't care what happens to me. I'm not really worried about anything else. I don't care about the world. I don't care about whose problem, any problem. I've known you for over 25 years, Billy, and I, I've seen the pain mix up with anger and sadness and the whole range of emotions. And to me, it just no one should have to go through what you, you've been through. Well, I'm going to say it's a parent's worst nightmare. Yeah. And it is, and it still is. Until he's dead in the ground, Gary, I'll be happy, but it won't take away the hurt and the pain, what he caused. Sadly... The pain lives on with each generation. For Evelyn and Clinton's families, they have resting places for their loved ones. But it's a different story for Colleen's family. Her body has never been found, which adds to the family's grief. This shirt that I'm wearing has a photo of um, my auntie Colleen 
um, with all the designs we have different meanings especially on the back we've got a meaning for mother sister cousin niece um, they're all in Gombengi words but yeah this shirt that I'm wearing today sort of empowers me to continue on the voice you're hearing is Deacon Walker his mum is Rose she was Colleen's older sister during the 1990s, when um, Auntie Collie went missing, you know, as years went on, the, tr the trauma, generation trauma, the court cases, um, you know, everything that sort of came about, which sort of, that family trauma, now that the case is, you know, in a state where we're in a mix where we're not sure well, I'm not sure where we are out with it, but I feel that today, here being at the Barrowville Carnivals, is also focusing on the kids and let their memory live on by generations and generations to come. So, you know, mentioning all the families here today, um, I feel that it's a good space, good energy. Um, it means a lot, especially for myself and my family. I've known the family for a long time and I know the impact it's had and, and particularly on, well, uh, 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 Colleen's uh, mother, uh, your grandmother, and uh, it, it's sad to see the impact. And I think the thing with Colleen is that we haven't recovered her body and that plays very heavily, I know, on your grandmother and uh, uh, your, your, your mother, Paula, Lucas, the whole family, Michael, everyone. And what I like to see about this uh, this carnival is that the families are not being forgotten the children are not being forgotten being here brings that energy for me to know that we're still going to fight on you know it's been 30 plus years and we're still going to continue the carnival isn't just a memorial for the three murdered children it's just as much a silent protest where the barrel community continues to fight for justice as I walk across the football field, I see a familiar face. It's Thomas Duro, Clinton's dad. Good to see you again, Thomas. Yeah, you too. How's this make you feel? Oh, well, just it's good to see things like this happening. You don't want any anyone going silly or things like that. It's better to have a good time than a bad time. Yeah. yeah. As a father, you still haven't got justice. No. We'll still, we'll, probably we'll never get it, that's the way things are going, yeah. Have, have you heard from the um, police in no. recent times? No, I haven't heard anything. You know, we had that meeting I handed over to uh, when I left the police and uh, introduced you to those other detectives. Have they stayed in contact with you? Not really, I haven't had much to do with them. I haven't seen them around here, so... Yeah. The, um, the fact that uh, you got, uh, you know, 40 police here... I never thought I'd see see the day with this, and I think Lulu captured it in when she made the speech, saying you wouldn't get that many police unless we were rioting. Yes, yeah, that's, that's that'd be right because I've never seen so many around. Yeah, yeah. it's a good thing, but don't you think? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to keep everything going un under control and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 It's. Uh, I, I think seeing the community mix with the police has to be a good thing, given what the community's been through and the, the issues between the police and the local community. Yeah, there, there was a bit of issues earlier on, but we seem to have got that under control and seem to be all right with them at the moment, so, yeah. It's a sight I never thought I'd see here in this community, a sports carnival heaving with dozens of police officers, all receiving a warm welcome. The fact the police are mingling with the Barrowville locals is something that wouldn't have happened in the past. It shows just how far the community has come. And it's a first for me too. For the first time since I left my career as a detective, the New South Wales Police have agreed to talk to me. I never thought I'd see the day. I'm talking to the Acting Region Commander of the New South Wales Police, Superintendent Scott Tanner. Scott, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Gary. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's come a long way. I've been up in this community for a long time, as you know, working in relation to the uh, the murder of the three children. And I've got to say, it really brings some joy to me to see so many police up here support, supporting a carnival in memory of the children. 
Absolutely, mate. And who would have thought, you know, even a couple of years ago that police would be welcomed to an event like this. Um, you know, we, we are so proud and honoured to be here. So we've got 53 police and administrative staff today in our ACLOs. Um, and, you know, the day is all about the community. And, you know, we, we are starting to feel as a, a really integral part of the community now. So it's a real honour to be here. It, it makes a difference because there was so many barriers, as, as you and I both know, and, you know, his, history shows. But seeing so many so many cops hanging around with the community, it's just a, it's, it's a feel-good uh, situation isn't it? It certainly is mate and look we've been here since this morning um, you know helping set up with the other storeholders and speaking to the the local mob and mate all we're getting is positivity you know um, and you can't put value on that and it's something that you know we're certainly proud of that that we've become involved. Yeah uh, breaking down the barriers and uh, also it's a carnival and we've got high school kids here today tomorrow will be primary school kids just the fact they're seeing the Indigenous community liaise, mix and, and have some fun with the police. Uh, you know, part of our cohort here is I think we've got about 22 uh, sworn Aboriginal police officers that are here. And we hope to not only just enjoy the, the atmosphere of the day, that, but also, you know, use those, those guys and girls as, as mentors to the community to show that, you know, if we're really going to make a difference, we've got to be reflective of the community. Yeah. And, and what better way than to have more Aboriginal police officers come into our organisation? And given, given the, the history of what the town's been through and Barrowville and what this carnival is about, and, you know, I, I know that the families hope that this carnival is so that the kids are not forgotten and what, what's happened. The fact that the police are here, would you say that's uh, suggestive of the fact that the police haven't forgotten what happened to the kids? Absolutely, mate. You know, um, I, I was stationed up here when, when the murders occurred uh, many, many years ago, um, and, you know, I certainly haven't forgotten. I remember... I remember the feeling in the communities and, and across the whole organisation when that happened. Um, so if there's any testament and any, uh, I guess, um, sort of reflection onto the family is that, you know, New South Wales Police have not forgotten. And that's what today's all about. Remembering, not forgetting. It's all about moving forward towards the future. So Great let's... to see all the cops here because I've got to do a smoking with them because they need it. That's Uncle Martin. He's one of the Aboriginal elders of Barrowville and a real character. Because they're the one that uh, done a lot of the incarceration. Was, uh, they haven't got a better, uh, they haven't got a good, you know, police in itself hasn't got any good rapport with black Indigenous people. Indigenous. You know, yeah. same. I don't say Indigenous, I say black. Black and white, it's a black and white situation. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, my two boys that had passed, yep. they played an integral part with the police force around here yeah. and they don't realise the, how important that was. So you think it's important that the police are here? I think it's important they came in this droves of numbers. Wow, I said, wow, this is so <laughs> Did you great. Think you're in and trouble again? I, <laughs> no, I, I, I knew what this day was about because the impact is still ongoing today. I came down here today with the intention of healing Martin because I need healing from that. As you will know that we went through a horrific time at yeah. the time and a lot of pissed off people at the time, but that's the way it was at the time, so. Anyway, so them three little children, uh, uh, you know, they, they were special to me. What did I mean, the three kids mean to you, Evelyn, Clinton, Colleen? Well, they was family, you know, so then we, stretch out as far as Bogabilla way, you know, where Clinton come from. He's yep. mobbed from out that from way, that some Maori way there. Yep. So and <clears throat> that's how we connected with Leone. Yeah. And anyway, so that's how we got together. And like the you've always been a part of the community. Do you think the families feel like they were treated fairly? Do you think they're like they're oh, trying no. to get justice? No, they weren't treated fairly because we know the justice system goes against Aboriginal people in Australia. You know it as well as I do. You yeah. know, the system does a, this uh, uh, genocide rules and law don't apply to us. But they created that or thrust it upon us. You know, so we've got to cope with the mechanism of what we can do mentally. You know, so, and you know it yourself. Well, you and I have been to the courts a few times. Yeah. And, we see now the system is, the system works, you know. And I was got very upset when they but removed you from the case, yeah. 
Yeah, but well, uh, that's just my. No, opinion. well, I, I. I mean, because yeah. I got a lot of respect and time for your admiration for what you've done and what you stood for. Yeah, you, well, you stood for equality. Well, it seems a oh. pretty uh, no-brainer, doesn't it? Really, it's a no-brainer I mean, because yeah. we've got people in these positions that make a decision on the little people. Yeah. Yeah, and. You can't get a mini littler than you. Yeah, like that. <laughs> well, I try to make light of every no, situation. Yeah, and, and Ma, uh, uh, that's what I've liked with you. You've always pulled a smile, no matter how the situation we've found ourselves in, and we've been in some shit situations fighting for justice for these kids. But you can always bring a smile. What do you see with a carnival like that? Like, in any retrospect, we this is in this capacity as need to be talked about for the rest of the period because we're not the only one that is in the same situation. I know a lot of young fellas and young women, young girls and boys, they're all not here today, you know. Mm. I, I, won't, I go and visit all the jails just to check some what's happened inside, you know, so. And not only that, mental health issues, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of stuff as yeah. well, you know. So, But anyway, so it's good to see you here well, today. Because <laughs> I, I, they had a few others before, and I'm really proud that you came along. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. No, nah, well, you guys have got into my heart and soul, so I, I can't forget yeah. you. And uh, so, yeah, I, I I'll always be coming the, back here. At the court in Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well... Good to see Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Take I care. can call you my friend. You yeah, can call so me you're your so friend. Yeah. Uh, you're not a cop now. So no. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Now I know how you guys feel. <laughs> the cops are after me. I've been coming to this town for almost three decades. Over that time, I've become friends with many of the locals, including Penny. Penny is Lulu's sister. She's Evelyn's aunt. And she's also one of the driving forces behind the Barrowville Memorial Cup. So the Bowerful Memorial Cup started from the parliamentary inquiry and the recommendations and out of the Grant Sarah healing report the families mentioned they wanted to do something annually for to remember and honour the three children that went missing and murdered in Bower. Um, and so this has been sort of going since 2017. Um, it's crazy. It's chaotic behind the scenes. It's, it's just hectic. But we wouldn't be able to do it without the funding this year from um, Department of Community and Justice, yep. Commissioning and Planning. Um, they were the major sponsors. Jamili Brunga coordinated all the services and they also coordinated the schools this year. Previously, Bower Central used to help coordinating the schools and we just like, oh, it was so massive behind the scenes. We have eight high schools today and we have over 30 services here today and then tomorrow we'll have primary and we've got 12 primary schools coming oh that'll be just as chaotic yeah and we'll also have normally with the primary students more families come yeah 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 so, so yeah, more, more people on yes. the on the ground yeah so what uh the parliamentary inquiry so that was uh, the, the parliamentary inquiry back in 2012 2013 yes. around around yes. that time yeah. Um, I, I remember giving evidence at the parliamentary inquiry and uh, there was the families giving evidence, a lot of people gave evidence and uh, it was pretty uh, pretty emotional during the parliamentary inquiry. And I think they made, oh, well it was over a dozen recommendations, there was quite a few recommendations and this is, stems from one of those recommendations. Yeah, there was 15 recommendations and this is one, this is an annual event. Last year we had 1,100 students, where th we, we will have more than that. Does it, it, over the two days, yeah. To seem, uh, it's quite amazing, isn't it? Because that parliamentary inquiry came from you guys marching down Macquarie Street and protesting at, uh, at Parliament and not uh, taking, uh, letting your kids be forgotten. That's it. And this is also an opportunity to bring all our younger generation together along the mid-north coast. So a lot of schools come from Coffs Harbour to Kempsey and in between the valley. Um, it's about healing for community, healing for the families, um, and we just love it. The kids have an awesome time. We have touch football going on, we have basketball and netball going on, and we have um, music pumping, and we've got a lot of service stores. And they promote the services because before the inquiry, 
parliamentary inquiry, we had zero services here back in the day for the families. There was yeah. a massive gap. There was no youth programs, there was no mental health services, no you know medical service, there was a massive gap. And basically the families were dealing with, they were, they were counselling each other. And they were healing, um, struggling with healing because they were struggling with what happened in the community. And the biggest thing here is we, it's shown the difference with the relationship with the police. We have 50 police here today, so we put them to use and they have to spread out and go help in touch football, in the canine, um, on the barbecue, netball, and we're going to make them work today. It's, it's, it's positive, bud, isn't it, seeing the police here. I, I'm, I'm really happy knowing the, the past history of, of what's happened in the town and the community and your mob and seeing the police here and there's a positive vibe about what's going on here would you agree yeah for sure we got police from all the way accolades from grafton to kempsey to nambucca heads and police um, crew came up from sydney so it's amazing um and it's good because it'll build up the relationship with the police and the younger generation with all our teenagers here yeah. Um, and it's also a deterrent. We had a lot of vaping last year, yep. and we haven't had any of that oh, so the far. The police are on the on the case. <laughs> <They're> everywhere. <laughs> no, not, I don't think they're game enough. No, yeah. no, va- no vaping. Hey, you normally have shirts each year, and I know this year was a bit of a struggle getting funding. But uh, speaking to people yesterday, um, they were saying how cool it was having a new shirt each year and seeing kids walking. Uh, yeah. around the up and down the coast wearing these t-shirts in memory of uh, the three children yeah so every year they all the students that register they all get a shirt for free and previously Gullumbilla Aboriginal Health Service used to fund that but they don't no longer have that funding anymore so it was really disappointing that we couldn't provide those shirts and that was part of the registration it's also promoting um, you know the three Bowerville children and the murders because it is unsolved um, and it's a way to get out in the community that you know community and families are still fighting they're not going to give up and it's an opportunity to say we're still here we still want justice. And if any anyone's listening to this and uh, this is about trying to get justice for the murder of uh, three children and those shirts not only do they bring joy to the kids they get allocated to, they, they spread a very important message. So if anyone wants to uh, contribute, let's get in touch. Oh yeah, for sure. We need, we need money for shirts. Last year we had 1,200 shirts. It cost about $40,000. Please, anyone, if you've got any donations or want to sponsor the shirts for next year and previous future years, I mean, um, yeah, give us a buzz at Jamali Barunga the families and the community have come together and this is one massive event and it's a focus on our future leaders which is our young people but we wouldn't have been able to also this year we've had a massive help with um not only with dcj funding the the event but also with regional youth new south wales and they helped and they came for the first time and it was an eye-opener for them because we had them running around crazy. They was here, we was here till six o'clock last night and then she was here six o'clock this morning helping us and <laughs> it was just like driving around stupid. We had little tiny cars wow. doing laps around trying to get all the stuff over. I, I gotta say, I, I was tired just looking at what you guys were doing. That was about 6.30, 7 o'clock last night and you didn't look <laughs> like you were close to finishing. No, no, and it was an early start this morning too when we're bugging. We got Capital J doing D, DJ and an MC and he's a local boy from Bowerville Mission. So we got a lot of talent here in the community and we want to promote our local talent as well. And it's a youth youth event. Hopefully we can have a, a little youth um, concert Sent one it. year. But we need funding. Okay, we got that message across. So anyone wants to help, a very worthwhile cause. And here's the uh, here's some of the kids walking away. They've all got smiles on their face. Yeah, some of them look are probably going back. They're all tired. <laughs> um, all the services have little show bags, so and they're youth focused. And it's also like a bit of a mini um, expo um, for some of the young people, so they can go back. The careers teachers go around. They get the information about a lot of the services, about apprenticeships, traineeships and career pathways for our young people in school. Well, it's good to see some goods come from a a real horror situation with three children being murdered and at least some goods coming from it and they haven't been forgotten. Well, look, Penny, I I just, yeah, full credit to you for organising this. I just want to ask a a personal question. How has the the murder of the three children and the fact that they've remained unsolved impacted on, uh, on you as a family member but the community? 
Oh, when families are devastated, they're angry, they're devastated, and they don't understand why they haven't had no justice. And you know, because the previous years, and we all know it was totally stuffed up with the first lot of police investigations, we just can't understand why three Aboriginal kids from a small rural town went missing on a mission and you know, can't solve it. We just feel like justice is against us. Um, but the families will never give up. And but they are, you know, they're tired, they're burnt out. You know, families are getting older um, and the, our family members are passing away and we still don't have any justice. The reason I'm here today might be because of heartbreaking crimes. Three kids were murdered and the serial killer is out there somewhere walking the streets. The murders divided the community for many years. But today, the Barrowville Memorial Cup unites everyone, bringing light and hope and even some laughter in the ongoing fight for justice. For Colleen, Evelyn and Clinton, their names should not be forgotten. <laughs>